Hey, this is the Greg MMA coming to you from uh, my kitchen. Uh, a couple things before we start. I just wanted to know. I have the hat. I got the gray, but uh, how to wear the hat? I'm not really sure. So we got a couple of different ways. We have, let's see, we have the American way. We have the French way. We oui, we, oui. and then we have the pastry, pastry chef. So, uh, like my video, tell me which way you like it, and that's the way I'm going to have it. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, today what we're going to do is we have a denuded top round, and we're going to make a big giant roast beef. Uh, I was debating on whether to cut this up and freeze it for four ounce portions for portion control. Uh, but basically, this is the top round part of the cow. It's, a, it's like the back rump, almost like if you were to look at me, it would be like right here uh, on a cow. Um, what you're going to need, a couple things to cook it. We have our pan. Uh, one of the things you want to worry about is uh, anytime you're cooking meat or beef, you want to leave it out a little while to get room temperature so it cooks uh, properly. If you're worried about bacteria, there's ways that we can uh, take care of that. Okay, anytime you're cooking meat you want or beef, you want to leave it out on a countertop so that uh, it gets room temperature. It cooks a lot better without having a really cold center and having the outside warm. So you want to leave it out. A, a, a big piece of meat like this, we're talking maybe at least an hour, maybe two hours out, just sitting on a counter. Uh, if you're worried about bacteria, here's the solution for that. What we're going to do is we're going to take our pan, take the rack out, and place the meat right in a pan we're going to come over to our stove, we're going to double burner it, and we're going to burn the outside. We're just going to sear the outside just to hold in the juices, and that'll kill any bacteria. Even though the meat's been wrapped, you still don't want to take a chance with any bacteria because you're leaving it out for uh, an extended period of time. So we're going to brown all sides, and then we will take our same rack. This is an elevated rack. And the reason you want to use an elevated rack is you don't want your meat just sitting in a bunch of juice cooking away because then it gets tough and chewy. You want to leave it up above the rack just like that so that you get a little air circulation underneath it. Okay, we have our piece of meat here and what we want to do is we're going to give it in the pan. Opens it up, we want to season it. I usually like using either sea salt or kosher salt is good because you get all the salt, uh, taste of salt, but just half the, uh, the sodium with kosher salt. So we're just going to give a good liberal sprinkling of the salt. Some people like to add a little bit of garlic powder, garlic salt. Uh, just sprinkle it on there nice. Okay, we'll flip the other side once we get it cooking in the, on the stove top. Here's your kosher salt, Morton makes it. Okay, so we're just going to take it right over to here. And we're going to crank on our burners. And we're just going to sear all sides of that. Okay, make sure you have some pot holders because this pan's going to get mighty hot. You can hear it sizzling away there. There we go. Just want to sear all sides, anything, all the sides that you can. Get it good and hot. Okay. Alright, so we have it browned, we added a little more seasoning. Now what we want to do is, we're going to put this in the oven at 250 degrees, low and slow. We're going to stick our favorite thermometer inside, and this is the Pampered Chef, I prefer the Pampered Chef digital thermometer. We're going to go in through the top, and we're going to try and find the deepest part of the meat. And just leave it right there, you want to try and get the center. So we're going to set it for... Two, uh, 250 degrees, 110 degrees, we take it out, we take the thermometer, and then we bump up the temperature to 500 degrees until the internal temperature reaches 130. So that's 250 degrees till it's 110, and then 500 until you get to 130. Now don't forget, rare is 130, medium rare is 135 to 140 degrees. Medium is 140 to 150, medium well is 150 to 155, 
And I don't even know why they make meat well uh, is 150 and up. Well done is 150 and up. I don't like my meat 150 and up. I like it medium rare uh, and sometimes even rare. It depends on the cut of meat. So we're going to take this whole thing. Got our gloves because uh, it's still hot from being uh, taken care of. And we're going to put it in the oven at 250. And you want to go center, bottom rack. Can you see that? Okay, here we are. We're going to pull it out and see how it looks. Wow, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, it's been resting for about 10 minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to transfer it over to our board to cut it. I'm going to pull out my thermometer. Jab the one side, jab the other side. Don't forget, now this is like 20 pounds when we first started, so... Oh, look at that. It's nice and crunchy on the outside. That's what you want to see. You pull the meat out. Not too much is coming out of it, the juice, so let's, uh, let's give it a shot. I'm just going to start carving straight down. Sometimes you want to carve on an angle with London broil, but with this roast beef, you can just carve straight down. I'm just going to cut a chunk so that we can see the inside. Look at that, that looks beautiful. And then we just slice it up, just like a roast beef. Let's look at that, here's our edge piece. Nice. That's it, tonight we're serving it with mashed potatoes and corn. Hey, 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 this is the Greg Gourmet. Enjoy.